It has never been easy to be a Negro in Alabama. Times have often been bad, and they've never been good. But there's always been cotton to plant, to chop, to pick, and to plow. Cotton has been a misery, but at least it's been a meal ticket. Now, it's not even that. The machines have taken over, and a field that once needed a hundred Negroes today barely supports three. Ten years ago, machines harvested only 2% of Alabama's cotton. This year, they will harvest more than 80%. The Negroes must look elsewhere for jobs, and the jobs are not in Alabama. Some go north. Many others remain, often because they are so poor, so tired, and so hungry that they can't even get up and go. In the long history of black belt deprivation, there have never been times as bad as these. Last spring, the Field Foundation sent six prominent doctors to investigate hunger in Mississippi. One of these was Dr. Raymond Wheeler, who has lived and practiced in the South all his life. We asked Dr. Wheeler to visit Hale County, Alabama. You have how many children to feed? Ten. Ten children? Yes. Yeah. Are there times when you don't have enough food at the house to go around? Yes, lots of times. There are times. Just have to make out what I have, give each one of them a little what I have. What did you have for dinner today? I didn't have any dinner. You're going to have a baby before long? Yes. Mrs. Anders, what does your husband do for a living? He has a job in Hayfield. In Hayfield? Yes. How much does he make when he's working? From three to four hours a day. Three to four dollars a day? Yes. And he hasn't worked now in three or four weeks? Yes. Do you get food stamps? No, because I'm not able to get them. Why? I ain't got them this month. They cost seventy dollars and I don't have it. Have you asked for any help from anyone in raising the money to buy those stamps? No, there ain't no need. Why? They ain't gonna give it to you. Have you been down to the welfare department and talked to them, or has your husband? No, so the last time I went to the welfare, the lady told me, said, hey, if you have a, a living husband, that they couldn't give you no help. Even if he's not working? Yes. Three weeks after talking to Dr. Wheeler, Mrs. Zanders gave birth to a severely malnourished baby. Two days later, the baby died. Alabama's solution to hunger in 15 counties is the federal food stamp program. The U.S. Department of Agriculture sponsors the program, but it is administered locally by the states and counties. Each county has a central office where the stamps are sold. One, two, three, four, food stamps are a means of giving a family a bonus. For a cash payment, $25 for instance, a family receives food stamps worth much more money, perhaps $70 or $80. The stamps, in other words, are worth much more than the cash paid for them. It has a $2 stamp in it that looks like this. $2. The cost of stamps varies from family to family. Coupons worth $80, for instance, may cost one family $40 and another only $15. This cost is set by local officials. Many factors affect the cost, such as the size of the family, income, and how much the family usually spends each month for food. Dr. Wheeler examined the children of a family that can't afford food stamps. Their father had not worked in five weeks. Way up high, like that. Come on. We've got it. Good girl. When children don't get enough to eat, their initial response to the world is mistrust. The children here get up hungry, go to bed hungry, and never know anything else in between. They are hungry all the time. They can't even feel the depth of their own hunger. Hi, Charles. Hi. How old are you? Fourteen. You go to school? Yes. Do you get breakfast at home before you go? Yes. Some more. Have peas. You have peas? Yes. Yeah. Well, when you get to school, what do you have to eat there? 
You don't have anything to eat when you're at school? Yes. Isn't, is there any place at school where you can buy something to eat or get something to eat? Do they, do they cook a meal for you there? Yes. Well, why don't you have some? I don't have the money to buy it. You don't have the money to buy it? Yes. Yeah. How much does it cost? Twenty-five cents. It costs twenty-five cents to have something to eat at school? Yes. Yeah. Well, what do you do while the other children are eating? I sit there. Where do you sit? I sit where the children be sitting. How do you feel toward the other children who are eating when you don't have anything? Be ashamed. Are you ashamed? Yes, they hard. Why are you ashamed? I don't have no money. Dr. Wheeler talked to a woman whose family has been sharecroppers ever since they stopped being slaves. The woman and her husband and 14 children and grandchildren still live on the farm, but it does not support them anymore. Miss Carlisle, why don't you raise your own food? Well, I raise this what I can. We raise dead okra. We raise all stuff like that and gods. And we can, but not no corn. That's why the children can go in the food line. Why no corn? Well, we don't have no corn acres. What do you mean? The landlord said he sold the corn acres to the governor. And we can't have no corn. Well, then who plants the corn on it? Don't nobody plant no. Just the land for the corn laid up into nothing. The land's there. That's right. When nobody plants it. That's right. Can't plant it when you sell it to the government. And whoever sell it gets a check off. You can't raise nothing on it. Just have to stay there. Now that you can buy food stamps, aren't you able to get more food for your family? I can't buy them every two weeks because I don't have the money. I don't have the $33 every two weeks. I don't have nowhere to get it from. I don't know make but three dollars and a half a day for the city. And that don't, you don't make over 20, 22 or 23 dollars a week. Now I couldn't get the food stamp. They said, the price what they want you to say. And if you ain't got that price, why you don't get no food stamps? I just have to go along with it because I can't do no better. I imagine, I feel like it because the children go to school together and do a little voting, something they never have did. I never know them to do it. And um, the young group can uh, speak a little more plainer, a little more up for themselves than we used to do. And that's why the average of the young people is leaving, going, leaving home, going north, why they've been all their life. Some have never been nowhere in their life, but they're leaving Alabama going north. Because they're getting better jobs and they're getting better treatment. The younger people. Because if we older people, we still here in it. We ain't like the young ones. Naturally, I figure they don't care where we go or stay here. How do you think they don't care? I know they don't care. I don't have to think they don't care. I know they don't care.